glorious God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I greet the church of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, thank God. I really appreciate for He's a good God and He's a wonderful God. Amen. I'd like to thank this wonderful opportunity that I get to me and to play our parents in our midst. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All protocol observed. So, we are who we are today because of what happened yesterday Amen. so that means our yesterday determined our today Amen. we're gonna be who we're gonna we are going to be because our today Amen. meaning that your tomorrow will determine but what about what you are going to do today? Amen. Amen. So, there are spirits that have been following us from yesterday. Yes, Lord. Even today, those spirits are still following you. Mm. Meaning that if you didn't have a chance to destroy those spirits, even tomorrow, you're still gonna suffer, or you're still gonna be tormented by the same spirits. Amen. And I wanna declare to you today that before you walk out of this place, oh, yes, God. you will be free from any evil yeah. spirit. Oh, yes, God. I wanna declare today that oh, yes. whatever that has been tormenting you, yeah. you're gonna be free, you're gonna be delivered oh, from today. I like to entitle my message today as future curses. Oh Jesus. We're gonna turn much into that. We're gonna get our scripture reading in the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 26. The book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 26. Yes. At that time, Joshua involved this case. May the curse of the Lord fall on anyone who tries to rebuild the town of Jericho at the cost of his firstborn son. He will lay its foundation. At the cost of his youngest son, he will set up its gates. Hallelujah. Amen. We are talking we, we, we are talking about future curses. That's why I said what happened yesterday determined. Who you are today. Amen. And what you are doing today will determine your future. Oh, yes, sir. So that means if you are not doing the right thing now, it's going to affect your tomorrow. Oh, yes, sir. Some of you, you are, success, you are successful now. It didn't start today, but it started yesterday. Yeah. You put some enough effort to be where you are yeah. now. Amen. So for you to be in the future, you need to put more extra effort. Oh, yes. That's why I said, if there are spirits that are following you and now you are still struggling, even tomorrow, if you don't break those spirits, you're going to suffer even tomorrow. Yeah, right? yes. Future curses. Oh, Jesus. Here the Bible says, Joshua said, anyone who's going to lay a foundation, any person, can be a person who's going to lay a foundation, by the cost of the firstborn, the firstborn will die when a person starts to build a wall. Hey. Let me take you back. We are talking about Jericho. Amen. We all know the scripture, or we all know we are familiar with this, with this verse, Jericho. Yeah. When the walls of Jericho fell, actually the walls of Jericho was the strongest wall ever. I can I liken the wall of Jericho like, like the Great Wall of China. Yes. That's how strong the wall was. Mm. God said to Joshua, Joshua, I'm giving you Jericho. Mm. Jericho on all the positions hey. is going to be yours. Hey. He didn't tell him how is he going to go in there. Yeah. But he said to him, you're going to go and possess everything that is in Jericho. Yeah. 
and he further gave instruction. You are not going to use your power to break the wall. No. Hey, come on. Jesus. Some of us we are using our own power to get rid of the spirit that has been following us. That's why we keep failing every now and then. Because now you fail and say, this time I'm going to get it right. You still fail. Tomorrow I'm going to get it right. You still fail. The Bible says Joshua didn't use his strength to break down the wall. He said to Joshua, gather all the priests. They must carry arms and trumpet with the ark. They must march around around the walls of Jericho. They must go around singing and singing praise and worshiping. Yeah. Which tell us that there is power in worship. Yeah. By worshiping, you can able to break any curses yeah. that is tormenting your life. Yeah. By worshiping, it, it, you're gonna change everything. The Bible says in the middle of the night, Paul and Silas were worshiping, which give us the guarantee that by worshiping. Every chance will be broken yeah. by giving praise to God. Yeah. Every spirit will, will, will move out, yeah. will move away. Oh, yeah. Come on. He said, I want you to organize the priests yes. who will go ahead of the ark. Yeah. You're gonna march around Jericho. The first day you will march, I hope the people of Jericho were listening. Yeah. And they were scared and say, What is going on now? But the second day, they say, ah, they will just march around and go. Hey, the third day, it was the same thing. They march around and go. But on the seventh day, that's where the miracles happened. On the seventh day, that's where the deliverance took place. Oh, Jesus. Who is Joshua? Joshua was Moses' assistant. Yeah. Every time when Moses was, even uh, Joshua was there, when Moses finished praying in the tabernacle, Joshua was going to go and follow by him, start praying. That's why he had the same spirit as Joshua. But they had different heart. Moses had the heart of compassion of people. But Moses was, an, he was a warrior. So, Joshua was Moses' assistant. The word Joshua is coming from the Hebrew word, or is derived from Hebrew. And in Hebrew, it means, the Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my salvation. That is the meaning of the word Joshua. In Greek, the word Joshua, it means Yeshua. Which is translated in English as Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Come on now. I hope everyone Come knows who Joshua is. In Greek, it hey. was Yeshua. In English, translated as Jesus. Hey. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Come on. We are going to talk about future curses. Now, let me continue with my story. The Bible says Moses sent spies to go and spy the land of Jericho. There was a woman by the name of Rahab. The Bible states that this woman was a prostitute. But when she saw two spies moving around Jericho, she realized that this is not just an ordinary man. We need people who who will see or who will have an eye to see that is not an ordinary that which is not ordinary the bible says she hired this man as they started to search around Jericho so the soldiers of Jericho realized that there are people who are strangers in this village so the wall actually was built in such a way that they knew their own people they knew their numbers if you are a stranger, it was going to be simple for them to recognize that you are a stranger. So that is how, or the purpose of the, of the war, it was to keep them safe in one place. Now, this woman by the name of Ra, 
she saw them and had them in their in her house. This woman, when I check the book of Matthew chapter yes. one, verse five, she is there in the geology of Jesus Christ. Hey, Jesus! Can you read Matthew chapter one, verse five? Hey, Jesus! Yes. She might have done the wrong thing, but she had an eye to see. Okay. She had the spirit in her to see that these two men is not just an ordinary man, hey. but they are divine. Hey. They are God's people. Yeah. That is why she took them in her house yeah. and kept them safe. Hmm. And when she released the man, she said to them, please. I know that you are coming to destroy Jericho. Hey. So what I'm asking of you is that keep me safe, keep me, keep me and my family alive. This woman, she was not right. She was a sinner, but now she's receiving salvation. Hey. Remember what is the meaning of Joshua? It means the Lord is my salvation. Now the Lord is my salvation. This woman, she's, re she's receiving grace from the spies that Joshua sent to Jericho. Amen. She's receiving grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, we are preaching well. <laughs> now, the Bible says, as they were marching along, the, along Jericho, around Jericho, the Bible says, God said to Moses, uh, uh, to, to Joshua, I want you on the seventh day, when you march seventh time, you must shout with a loud voice and proclaim that the walls of Jericho has fallen. Which means that Joshua didn't use his strength to pull down the wall. Even his warriors didn't use their strength to pull down the wall. Yeah. It was divine. It was the angels, the divine power yeah. that put down the wall. Yeah. Then when the wall was down, Joshua said to the people, now you can go in. Take anything you want. Destroy Jericho. When he finished, he said, Cursed be a man who will lay a foundation with the cause of the firstborn. The, the firstborn will die. When this person starts to lay foundation, why is Joshua cursing the, pe the person who's going to rebuild the wall of Jericho? Because it was not him who took down the wall. It was not Joshua, but it was divine. Yes. Even Joshua didn't understand how come the wall, we were just singing, but yes. the wall fell down. Yes. I promise you now, if you can shout, you cannot, you cannot bring this wall building down with your own voice, but it was divine. They shouted until the wall collapsed. And he said, Cursed be a man who will lay the foundation with the cost of the firstborn. Hey. Now, why the firstborn? Hey, okay. Normally or traditionally or naturally, the firstborn is takes the inheritance of the father. Remember what is happening in, in, in Britain? The prince now was ordained to be to be the prince. Before it was not a prince. Remember what happened in Switzerland? The king died, now they looked for someone of the elder son to be enthroned, to, to sit on the throne. That means when the firstborn dies, no one will take over from the generation going forward. All right. And he further says, when you continue to build the wall, your last born will die. So that means the entire generation will be destroyed for a person who will continue to build the wall. Don't remember, don't forget, we are talking about future curses. 
future cases. We're going to get our second scripture in the book of 1 Kings chapter 16 verse 24. Verse 34. Verse 34. Yes. And it says, It was during his reign that here a man from Bethel rebuilt Jericho. When he laid its foundation, it cost him the life of his elder son, hey. Abiram. And when he completed it, set up its gate, it cost him the life of his younger son, Seka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Here we are talking about the fulfillment of the curse. The Bible says, Heal who was worried inside. Why are we living like this? Let's just build this wall to protect us again. He did not know that the curse was invoked. That any person who will build the wall of Jericho is going to cost him his son. And if he continues the more, the younger son or the last born will die. Now here he is building the wall to protect his own people. And the curse is falling upon him. Now, the difference between the time of Joshua and the time of Heal, it was more than 500 years. Which means that a curse can stay for more than enough years until such time or until such occasion happened to you. Some of us, we are struggling because of what happened when we, while we were still young. Hey. Remember what your mother said to you? Hey. She said, you are not going to get married. Hey. At the age of 16, she told you that. And she said those words in anger. Hey. Now you are 30, you are 35. You are struggling in hey. your marriage because it was said at your youngest age. Now, it was not going to happen at the instant because you were still young. So, it was waiting for the occasion to happen. Now that you are mature enough to get married, that's where you are suffering from what your mother said to hey, you. Hey, my God. Mercy God. Future curses. <laughs> if no one destroyed the curse, you will be, everyone will be laughing at you. Just because of what was said before. Yeah. Remember when I started talking here, I said your yesterday will determine today. And your today will determine your tomorrow. Oh, yes. And I want to declare to you today yes. that when you walk out of this place, oh, yes. every curse will be broken from oh, you. Yes. I want to declare that every spirit will walk away from you. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Blessed Lord. be the name of Jesus. Amen. Here the Bible says, here they didn't know anything about the case. Mm -hmm. Now he wants to be generous to his own people. Mm -hmm. He wants to be generous to the Jerichos, to, to the people of Jericho. And he said, let me just build a wall for these people to be safe. He didn't know about what was said before. There are cases that you don't know, but it was said in your life. When you leave home, you told them and say, I am going to job it. To do what? To look for a job. Mm. And they said to you, I don't think you will get a job. Hey. Because we've been there and we went to Bethel. We are here with you. We can see us. Mm. Those people, they were testing you. Mm. And you didn't realize that these people they are speaking curse on me. Mm. You came to job it. You start asking for a job. You've been wanting an interview to another interview. Some they promised to call you. Some they didn't. When you are lucky you got a job, the first person to be, to be retrained, it was you. It means that it was said and it, it was waiting for the occasion to happen. It was said before. 
now is happening. Hey. I don't know what you are struggling at or what condition you are struggling from. I don't know. And the biggest fear is that your parents can curse you, but now they are no more. You can't go to them and say, Mom, I'm sorry for what I have done. Please forgive me. Then what do you do when the situation is like that? Jesus. Some of you, you are breaking, you, you are involved in a relationship from one lady to another or from one guy to another. When you leave that relationship, that person is crying and he is cursing you. You won't see that happening. The time when you say, today I want to settle down. I'm tired of playing. That's where you will see the curse happening in your life. That's where you will reap what you have sown. Future curses. Now, we have, we have a type of curses. And I'm going to explain to you. The first curse that I want us to discuss is the curses of God or the curses from God. In the book of Genesis, the Bible says, in the Garden of Eden, men and women sinned, and God cursed them. He banished them from the, the, the Garden of Eden. Those are the cases of God. Some of the cases, it happens when, 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 you, when you don't follow the commands yeah. or the rules of God. Deuteronomy 28, he says, you will be blessed going in, you will be blessed going out. He spoke more about blessings. But when you read it furthermore, verse 15, it says, curse be a person who will disobey. Jesus. That means, curses of God doesn't mean, that it doesn't only rely on it only relies on you not following the law or the commands of God. Yeah. Remember, when God said to Moses, to Moses, when God said to him, he says, if you fully obey my command. Mm. So that means there are many people who are not obeying God's command and the curses of God is falling upon them because they are too ignorant to the command of God. Hey. The Bible says, you you must not lie. What is happening now? Hey. Hey. People are lying. That is why you will operate under a case. For an example, the person who was here to collect offering, she said, put me in trust and see if I won't open the windows of heaven. When you go to the top, to the few verses on top, it says, you are under a case because you are not giving time and offering. Hey. So that means the cases of God it only comes to uh, to work or to, to to function when you disobey the command of God. Those are the cases of God. In Genesis chapter um, chapter four, the Bible says, "Cain kill Abel." The Bible says, "You shall not murder." But here it happened that this brother killed the younger brother. Then God cursed him. Okay, number two, generational curses. Generational curses is whereby you are suffering from a certain sickness from your forefathers or your grandmothers or grandfathers. Let's say you are diagnosed with, with, with cancer or with TB. When you go to a hospital, or they will do a background check to say, is there anyone in your family who has had the same disease yeah. or the same sickness? So they are trying to check in within your generation that is there anyone who's suffering from that disease? So if it's starting by you, it's unusual. But if it happened before, now they are used to it. So those are generational cases. Generational cases, is part, it, it is passed from one generation to another generation. Uh -huh. Okay, let's, let me give you a scripture. Genesis chapter 20, verse 2. Genesis 
chapter 20, verse 2. Yes. Abraham introduced his wife Sarah. Abraham introduced his wife Sarah. By saying, and he said, She is my sister. She is not my wife, she's my sister. <laughs> So Abraham actually he was denying his wife because he was afraid that Abimelech will kill him and take Sarah to be his own to be his wife. So now let's go and check Genesis chapter 26, verse 7. Generational cases. Genesis 26, verse 7. Yes. When the men who lived, they ask Isaac. They ask Isaac. Isaac is the firstborn of Abraham. When Abraham denied Sarah, he didn't have no, Abraham was not uh, uh, Isaac was not born yet. And he said, Sarah, she's not my wife, she's my sister. She he said those words because Isaac was not born yet. Don't forget, Isaac was not born yet. I want us to understand the generational curses. Now continue. Asked Isaac about his wife Rebecca. They asked said, about Rebecca. Rebecca, it was the wife of Isaac. She was. She is my sister. She is my sister. Now, Abraham's son is denying his wife hey. to the same king Abimelech. Hey. Now you understand how generational curses operate. Yeah. Now we have the clear picture that what you say now is going to affect your children. What you are doing today is going to affect your tomorrow. Your children will start to misbehave because you are misbehaving today. And I want to declare today, before we walk out of this place, we will be delivered from any curses. Before we leave this place, before we walk out of this door, we will be free in Jesus' name. Amen. Generational curses. It's passed from one generation to the other. So we need to be aware of this thing. We need to know this thing. There were spirits that has been following us. They were, it, it was, it, the spirit is waiting for occasion. These curses are waiting for a certain occasion. This curses was not gonna manifest or it was not gonna happen. When Isaac didn't have, didn't marry Rebecca, right. or what Isaac was still a boy, okay. so it was waiting for Isaac to marry first, so the curse can happen. Hey, Jesus, mercy Lord. Yeah, I don't know what hey. and who and how it happened hey. or who cursed you. Mm -hmm. Now you are struggling. Now you are suffering because then it didn't make sense. Let me give you a simple scripture Proverbs 18, verse 21. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Yes. And it says, The tongue can bring death or life. Your tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Those who, who like talking too much will reap your own consequences. Hey, hey. That is why when you are always cha -cha 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 -cha. <laughs> you will reap what you are sowing. My God. Mercy God. Now let's go to number number three. The self-imposed curse. Self-imposed curse is where you curse yourself unknowingly. Speaking bad about yourself, like saying, I'm poor, I'm struggling, I don't have anything. You are kissing yourself unknowingly. That is why I read that verse before I go to self imposed case. So it means that what you are saying is going to come to you. You are imposing your cases, you are imposing cases to yourself. That is why you are struggling to go forward because every time we greet you, how are you? I'm just trying. You will keep trying until when? Yeah. <laughs> hey, help us, Lord. Oh, Lord. When we ask you, how are you? Ah, it's still the same as yesterday. Hey. My God. Self-imposed case. You are testing yourself unknowingly. Mm. 
You are feeling bad about your future. You don't know that what is gonna happen, what is happening now, is gonna affect your tomorrow. Yeah. You will be stuck with your kids, and you are still suffering just because you said in the at the time you were still in high school that I'm suffering. And even after you got a job, it's still the same thing. You are still suffering. Hey. Because you impose those curses to yourself. Jesus. No one did but yourself. Jesus. Self-imposed curses. Jesus. You say things, maybe you will say those words, you were joking. But it came to pass. Hey. Jesus. Hey. Oh, Lord. Psalms 34 verse 13. We are still under self-imposed case. Psalm 34 verse 13. 13. 13. 13. Yes. Then keep your tongue from speaking evil. Keep your tongue from speaking evil. And your lips from telling lies. From telling lies. Hey. Hey. Keep your tongue from speaking evil. And your lips from telling lies. If you don't want to impose curses on yourself, you must say good things. Say good things about yourself. I know you might be struggling now, but if you proclaim it now, if you say it now, tomorrow is going to be better tomorrow. Oh, yes. Your suffering will not last forever. Amen. But to those that last forever, it's because they keep saying bad things to themselves. But if you can change the way we talk, if we can change the way we speak to ourselves, yeah. we're gonna make ourselves, we're gonna make our tomorrow brighter than today. Yeah. Remember when I said, when I started saying it, I said, you are yesterday determined who, we, who you are today. Yeah. And your today will determine who you are tomorrow. Yeah. So if you keep speaking bad things to yourself, tomorrow is not gonna be nice, it's gonna be ugly. Yeah. Self-imposed cases. Mm -hmm. What are you saying to yourself? Mm -hmm. Some of you, you, you are parents. What are you saying to your kids? Mm -hmm. Some of the kids are very notorious. They will come to you and say away. Mm -hmm. By doing that, you are kissing your kids. Mm -hmm. You are kissing your kids. Mm -hmm. There is power in speaking good about yourself or your life or your surroundings. The Bible says there was a man who was a, 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 the emperor, the, the king of soldiers. His daughter was sick. He went to Jesus and said, Jesus, my daughter is sick. Then Jesus said, don't worry, I'm going to come and pray for you. He said to Jesus, no, you don't have to come to my house. Just say a word. Just say a word and then my daughter will be healed. Yeah. This man, he says, I know because I exercise authority. Hey. When I say do this to my, to, to, my, to my soldiers, they jump and do it. Yes. When I say do it, they jump and do it. Yes. Hey. But to you, you don't have to come to my house. Just say a word, hey. then my daughter will be healed. Hey. What are you saying? What positive things are you saying to your daughter? Hey. This is a man who is standing on behalf of his daughter. This is a man who's standing on behalf of his kids and say, I'm gonna say good things about my kids. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Your kids start misbehaving because of what you are saying now. You can see this one, he's still here, he doesn't know anything. When you tell him stop, he will come back. Stop, come back. And you say it the way. But during that, when it grows up, grows up, that word is still there, is still there. It's gonna wait for occasion oh. for it to happen. For Jesus. example, if you tell your kid you are stupid, at a young age, or at few, at, at maybe one, 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 one year, when that child starts going to school, hey. you will see he's struggling, or she or she is struggling to cope with this education or to compete with other students. Your kid is only the last one because of what we have said yesterday is affecting the future of your kids. Hallelujah. 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 It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Oh yes, Lord. 
and I know it's going to be all right. Oh, yes, Lord. Before we walk out of this place, every kid will be released. Oh, yes, Lord. Before we walk out of this place, every curse will be broken. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to be ready. Because from now, you will go out a different person. Oh, yes, Lord. You will go out and change something. Oh, yes, Lord. You will start to make sense when you oh, go out. Oh, yes, Lord. Even the things that were closed will be open. Oh, yes, Lord. All the doors that were closed is going to be open. Oh, yes, Lord. Everything that you want will to, to come to pass. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Joshua. Now we are going back to Joshua. Thank and you. another case is, is the, the last case, the cases of men. Hmm. The cases of men occur okay, whereby um, you don't like somebody. Hmm. Then they kiss you. Hmm. Maybe you did something along the way. Going, back, going to work in a taxi, you annoyed someone, then they kiss you. Hmm. Um, ah. It's a lot of examples. But the cases of men, it happens whereby somebody cursed you. I gave an example um, in a relationship. When you break somebody's heart, then the person cursed you. That means you will struggle uh, in the future. So those are the cases of men. Now, let's go back to Joshua. The Bible says it took more than 500 years for a curse to happen. Some of the curses that are imposed in your life, they are not happening at the same time. But it takes for some time or it's waiting for a certain occasion for it to manifest. Some of us who have been living with these curses for such a long time. But today is going to be the end of all those things. Amen. Luke chapter 18, verse 35. Luke chapter 18, verse 35. Yes. And it says, As Jesus approached Jericho, As Jesus approaches Jericho, A blind beggar, Just hold on. He was not yet in Jericho, but he was approaching Jericho. Okay. Jesus realized that in Jericho there is a curse that is still there. All right. This woman, this, this man here, he built the wall and it cost him the firstborn and the lastborn. But the curse was not broken yet. So to say, if the curse is not broken in your life, no matter, it doesn't matter how much you pray, the curse will still operate in your life. Come on. So now the Bible says, Jesus is approaching Jericho. Why Jesus is going to Jericho by himself? When I started here, I said, in Greek, Joshua, it means Jesus. So Jesus is going to remove the case that Joshua hey. has invoked hey. in Jericho. Oh, yes. I don't know if you get me. Hey. Jesus had to go yes. by himself to remove the case that was operating under Jericho. Oh, yes. As he approached Jericho, hey. he was not yet there, but you can see that this what is in Jericho is buried. Can you continue? A blind beggar. A blind man. Who was sitting beside the road. He was just beside the road. People were passing him. He knew, Jesus knew that if I go there, everything will be sorted. Amen. Before he entered Jericho, a blind man approaches him. When he heard the noise of the crowd going past. People who were passing by to, to accompany Jesus. He asked what was happening. And then he asked because he couldn't see. They told him. They told him. That Jesus the Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. Was going by. He was passing by. So he begged. And he cried out. Shouting. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. Son of David. Son of David. Have mercy on have me. Have mercy on me. Mighty God. Be quiet. People say to him. Shut up, you are making noise. Hey. 
those are the cases that they were still saying to this man. Hey, continue. Be quiet. Yes. The people in front yelled at him. They said to him, it, normally, our, how we live here, we normally take people who are disabled, we put them in front. But in this occasion, they said to this blind man, you are making noise. Instead of, of carrying him to where Jesus was, or where Jesus was, shut they shut him up and say, you are making noise. What is that? Here, uh, in, in, in this lifetime, when, when a person is disabled, we, we take care of him. We take much extra care of him to make sure that his needs are met. But in this occasion, the people who were around him, they shut him up. This shows that Jesus was going to a right place. The cases were still there. And he had to remove the case. The Bible says your eyes is the light of your body. There is a reason why Jesus met a blind man first. Okay. When he says, when the Bible says your eyes is the light of your body. So this means that if your eyes are blind, even the whole body will be in darkness. Okay. So that means in Jericho, there was darkness. This is the first encounter with Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is encountering, the encounter with Jesus is a blind man. We send a message that to the city, Jericho, there is darkness. There is a lot of curses. There is a lot of things happening. The Bible says there was a man who was coming from Jerusalem to Jericho. Along the way, the murderers, the, 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 the thieves, they beat him up and leave him half dead. This shows that to where he was going, to a place where he was going, it was not a good place because it was full of curses. Now, Jesus is going to Jericho. He had to remove the darkness in Jericho because the curses were still operating. Chapter 19, verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho. Now Jesus is in Jericho. He made his way through the town. He made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was there. He was the chief tax collector in the region. He was very rich. And he had become very rich. Yes. Yes. He tried to get a look at Jesus. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But he was too short to see over the crowd. Just like me. <laughs> Continue. So he ran ahead and found a psychological tree. He ran away to find a tree. That was the joke. <laughs> Besides the road. Yes. For Jesus was going to pass that way. Because he knew that Jesus was passing that way. When Jesus came by. When Jesus passed by. He looked at Zacchaeus. He looked at him. And say, Zacchaeus, yes, quick, come down. Yeah, I must be a guest in your home. Today. I'm going to your house. Thank you. I'm going to your house today. Yes. Why is Jesus choosing a rich person instead of a poor person? Yes. Because there were a lot of cases. Jesus was going to release the riches yes. from a rich man yes. and distribute to the poor. Yes. And that's how, that is part of breaking the cases. Some of the cases were broken because people were suffering. Yeah. So when you go to a rich person, yeah. you are taking the riches from this yeah. rich man yeah. and giving yeah. to everyone. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Today, you will be a different, you will be a different yeah. person. Yeah. I declare yeah. that from today, you will be a changed person. Yeah. Yeah. I declare yeah. that from now, you will be somebody. You and say you are great. Yes, People will look at you and say you are powerful. Yes, because God. Jesus is here yes, to remove the curses. Yes, People God. will used to look at you now. Yes, but yes, from God. today, they will yes, recommend you. Yes, when they have meeting, they have meeting when you are not there. Yes, now God. they will invite you to the yes, meeting God. and say, yes, We are having a family meeting yes, or we are having a family. Yes, Jesus is here. 
Let the curses to be broken. Let them be happy. 